guys. It's Kene once again. And today I'm here with another problem, right? And what is it today? We are going to look at how to derive all the possible arrangements of characters, you know, that constitute a, a string or a word, if you want to call it that. So what are the permutations of a particular string? So how do I arrange all the characters that, that make up a string of characters, you know, all possible arrangements of all the characters? That is what we are going to look at today, to derive those arrangements. And to do that, we'll use a concept in programming called recursion. And what does recursion entail? It entails having a function call itself. So we do, we, the program does something repeatedly making use of a function that calls itself. So if I have the string, if I have a string A, B, C now, right? How do I arrange all the letters constituting A, B, C? Now, the first thing I will do is, right, fine. I have the first letter, the A. Now, A should swap with the first letter. So it's like the first letter swaps with the first letter. That's what the system is going to do. And that gives us, you know, A in the first position. And then it backtracks. So what does backtracking entail? It has to do with uh, returning to the former state of a thing, returning to its former state. That's what recursion entails, okay? So guys, I mean, that's what backtracking entails, not recursion. Now, if I have A in this fixed position here, okay? It backtracks and, you know, returns to A, B, C. And then what's the next thing? This time now, B will swap with A, right? So instead of having A in the first position now, it is now B. So B takes the place of A, A takes the place of B. That's why we have B instead of A, B. Then there's backtracking again. And B is fixed in this position, remember? In the first position. Then I return to A, B, C. So the next letter now, which is C, should swap with the first letter, which is A. Since I have A, B, C. So C takes place of A, A takes place of C. So that will give us C, B, A, just like that. I hope you understand it this far. Then we continue because we haven't used all the letters that constitute the string. We keep swapping, we keep swapping um, characters until we have got to the end of the string. So I start from this, you know, we are like at this point now, A, B, C, where A is in a fixed position. Then the next I'm going to do now is to make use of the second element there, which is B. So B swaps with B, so that I now have for the next level, A, B, C, where B swaps with B. Then it, also, it is not also possible that, you know, given A, B, C, so there's backtracking here again. So I return to A, B, C. Then B should swap with C. And that's what we have, we, we've done here to arrive at A, C, B. Then it returns to A, B, C, to state A, B, C, and returns to state A, B, C here. Then it comes down here, you know, the B is fixed at this point. Then I'm going to work with A and C. So A swaps with A since I have B in this fixed position. So A swapping with A gives us B, A, C. So there's really no change. Then A swapping with C. That gives us B, C, A, where the B is in a fixed position. So at this point now, guys, here B, A is fixed and B, C is fixed, right? Then there's backtracking all the way to A, B, C. Then it comes to C, B, A, right? And guys, let's see now. If I have C, B, A, what are the two many letters, you know, that should take place and um, that should um, be involved in any swapping? It is B and A. So given C, B, A this time, B swaps with B. So there's no change. It gives us CBA. Then if I have CBA, you know, I, I want to swap B and A this time. 
So B swaps with A. That gives us C, A, B. So you see that at this point, I've used all the letters of that string. Nothing again is left. And so we have the end result here, all these arrangements, you know, from A, B, C to C, A, B. So that's what, back, that's what a recursion is in a nutshell. But we're going to use Python, you know, to implement recursion in getting all the possible arrangements of a, of a given string. I hope we understand, guys. Okay, so let's go to uh, editor. Now I'm going to do something, guys. I'm going to um, create or collect my string, so to say. So I'm going to just call it aim. Now aim there should be maybe um, C-A-T, right? Great. Now, the next I'm going to do, still using the aim, I'm going to make it a list. So what it means is that the letters constituting CAT will become separate entities. So C will be separate from A and A will be separate from T, right? Distinct. So that's what I'm going to do using the list constructor called on CAT. So I'll give the string as the argument. So list now is a list of characters. I mean, imp is now a list of characters, okay? Now we go further. Now I need the length, since I'm going to carry out swapping up to the very last character in that, you know, um, in that list. So I need the full length. I'm going to get the length of my string using the length method, just like that. So this should be him. So what's the length of him, okay? Now, again, guys, you know how looking at go going back to this um diagram here we see that a is fixed then i swap a with a i mean i swap a with a a becomes fixed then coming back to abc b now takes the first position that is swapping um, a with b right and then goes back to abc then i swap c with a so each of them gets to and become the first element. A, B, C gets a chance to become the first element, right? All right. So we see that there has to be a starting position. There has to be a starting position. And so how do we get that starting position? I'm going to just say, okay, fine. Let it start at zero, that's it. The index is zero at position zero, right? Great. Now. The next I want to do, having got all these uh, you know, different variables, I'm now going to write my um, recursive function. And it's very simple, guys. Now let's see, um, call the, let me call it before I you know, write the, the function. So let me call it perms, using the dev keyword perms. And all these will be the arguments. Um, let me say my string, which is like imp. And then, oh, sorry, my list, which is imp. And then the length of the list and the starting position. Just like that, right? Okay. So let me get this and write our function. Write the function here. So what do we do? Now guys, I want to check for something. I, I, I'm going to check. Okay, when does, when does um, all the, does each of the characters in that string, when does each of them get used such that, you know, at some point, yeah, at some point, all the characters would have been used. So the, the start position, the start position, you know, progresses to the very last character. And I need to uh, be able to determine when that has happened. 
and that's simply going to um, require using the if statement there. If the start is equal to the length, if you get what I mean, because the start position keeps moving rightwards. You know, if you recall, um, we fix characters at the beginning, right? That's the start. And then when we have to come back again, we're not going to make use of the character that has been fixed. Let me go back a bit here. So we see that A is fixed here. So I'm not going to make use of A anymore. I'm going to just use B and C. Now B is fixed here, right? So the next letter here becomes a fixed letter at the, uh, at the beginning. So that's how we keep moving rightwards, you know, in fixing our characters. So how do I now know when all the characters have been fixed at the beginning position. So that's like when start is equal to the entire length of that list, okay? So what should happen now? Guys, I'm simply now just going to print, just print out that particular um, arrangement. So I would convert this to, just convert it to a, a string using the join method. So just get me that arrangement, which is the imp, right? That's just what I need to do. Okay, so now if that's not the case, if I haven't got to the last character, then I need to keep swapping. I need to keep swapping. And that's going to require using the for, the for loop. So for i in range, now what's the range? The start, beginning from the start up to the length. You know, the length is one character more than the position that the computer uses. So if I have a list that, is, that has a, if I have a list with a length of five, it actually, it actually means that there are um, five positions beginning from position zero. Do you understand? So um, if I want to get all the characters among the five, then I need to have and the number of characters minus one as the last position. So please, let's get that right. So for I in start to length, what should happen? I'm going to create a temporary variable, which I call temp, and set it to my list, which is like aim at position start, the very first, the very first um, element there. What is the character? at that first position. So I'm going to save it as temp, right? Then I will now swap kind of, you know, so the start character now will no longer be what it used to be. So it now becomes the whatever value that I, you know, becomes because I keeps progressing because well, you know, we need to move from left to right. So that will now simply be aim at position i. So what it means now is that at the very beginning, start is zero and i is zero. So um, it's just like saying a swaps with a. That's for the first iteration here, right? But you know, the next time it comes back to i, i becomes two. So the start position, I mean, i becomes um, one going from zero upwards. So when it comes back now, I increases by one. So I need to now fix it. So the new value of the stats of stats will now be the value of I, whatever it is. Okay, then I'm going to now set my, my I, right? To what was formerly the start position. So there's a swapping. What I'm doing here is that I'm just getting the start. I'm just getting to swap the start element with the next element in that loop. That's what I'm just doing. Then having um, carried out the swap, I will call the PEM, the PEMS method here or function calls itself at that point. So, so that it carries out you know, the swap again this time having moved one position to the right. So I'm going to call that PEMS method at this point. 
terms and then give it this as an argument, the list once more. But guys, guys, let's take note of something. Let's take note of something. The start position, okay, so the length is still the length anyway. It's still the same number. I'm not adding, I'm not adding new values. Now, the start is not going to be the first position this time. You know, I has moved by one place. So it's going to be, so the first character becomes fixed. I need to start swapping from the second character. So that's why my start is going to be start plus one when I, when I call PEMS function again. So that's it. Then there will now be backtracking. So everything, please go back to its former state so that I can restart my swapping. So that's why I'm just simply going to do this. So with this now, all the previous changes are returned to the former state so that I can now begin swapping afresh. Okay? Okay, so that's it, guys. Then at the end of it all, I'm simply just going to call my function here. That's all I need to do, guys. I'm just going to call my function, pems, len start. Now let's see what that gives us. So these are all the permutations of CAT, CAT, CTA, ACT, ATC, you know, and blah, 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 blah. I hope you understand it, guys. All right, but that's not really what I want to do today. Just that, that's not all that I have to do. We've created our function, our recursive uh, function to get the permutations of, you know, um, all the arrangements of characters in a string. The next thing now, guys, that I want to use a graphical user interface. It's more presentable using a GUI. So I'm going to like create an app, okay, using Tikinta, right? So I'm just going to modify our current program. What I want to do now is import Tikinta. I, I'm going to use a win, I'm going to use a window. And that requires using Tikinta. So import Tikinta as TK. So that's an alias. Then I'm going to use themed Tikinta. Is that that has extended functionalities using the um, TTK. So from Tikinta import TTK. And then I'm going to use fonts as well. So from Tikinta import fonts. I'm going to use these uh, modules here and classes. Now, next I want to do very, very, very quickly is to create my window. Okay, so what's it? I'm going to create a, a window object there, win tk dot. Right, so that creates my window object. Then I'll set the title. I'll just call it my app. Then next is the dimensions. So what are the dimensions of the window? I want to say 500. So remember the quotation marks, 500 x 500 500 by 500 then afterwards i don't want it resizable so dot resizable set vertical and horizontal to false 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 so not resizable then next thing i want to do is okay so i don't want to let me not call the function yet. So I would show the window and keep it on the screen until it's closed using the main loop. Just like that. So let's see what we have guys. 
Beautiful. So these are window, but nothing is on the window yet, right? Okay, so let's create the widgets. I'm going to write here Just come down here a bit, create the widget. So I need a label. So let me call the label object L1 and use ctk.label. That creates the label. And I would put it on my window. So that's the argument there. And what's the text of it? So I'll say enter a string. Right, and right after that, I will pack it. Now, pack simply means put it on the window, let it take the entire position. So, such that when I need to add another widget, you know, the widget comes below. So, I'm going to put that L1 there in the window using the pack method, the layout there, the pack layout. Then, um, guys, I need to increase work on the fonts of the text that is displayed in the label. So I'm going to, at this point, let me go back up here, create my fonts. So just call this fonts using the class there, font.font. And it takes what arguments? It takes the family. So I should call the family Calibri. Then um, the size, say 24, 24 should be okay. And then the weight, I want it bold. So that should be a string there, bold. Now with the fonts created, I should just give it as an argument, initializing the label. So font will simply be fonts, you know, the fonts created here, just like that. Okay, so guys, let's see if there are any issues. Great, so that works out, enter a string. I have my label, the next I want to do is um, create a, a text input, right? So let's, Call it a tikinta. In tikinta, it's just simply called entry. So I'm going to use that right here. So I'll call it E1. Initialize it TTK entry. I'll put it on the window. Then the text should actually be set to nothing. And then the font. The font should be set to fonts, just easy as that. Then I'm going to pack. Packing means just put it on the window. So um, just like that. Now let's see guys, if we have our entry, great. So that's the entry there now. Then the next thing is uh, I want to create a button, a button to hold I mean, a button to, and that, okay, if the user clicks, the calculation is carried out. So let's have B1, I'm just calling it B1. And that should be ctk dot button. Right, so put it on the window. Then the text of the button should read um, submit. Just like that. And guys, uh, for, for um, styling your button, you we do not have that um, pleasure of setting it here directly, right? I just want to create my style object. I want to create a style object that I'm going to use in styling my button. So right here, okay? 
I will just call this style. That's my style button and my style object and initialize it just style like this, right? Okay, so let me just call this tk.style. Just like that. Now, the next I want to do now is to configure my style. So style dot Um, sorry, guys. Yeah. Just call these styles. Styles. But, um, I think this should be TK. Yeah, this should be TK. Styles dot configure. And I'm going to set the font. To be um, Calibri twelve. Oh, this should be twenty. Okay, let me call this eighteen, and I think it should be bold. Okay, so that's configured there, but I need a variable name for this. So let me just call it um, B dot T button. This is for the button. So this is like the variable name for this object, right? The styles object. So that's T button. And then the font is created this way. And I'm going to come to my button. and simply have style set to B dot C button, right? Just like that. Then B1 dot pack, right? Let's see what that gives us. Oh, the computer has no, Okay, guys, I think I've run into issues here. Let's see. Let me just use the IntelliSense there. Look for style, style, style. Okay, sorry guys, uh, that's part of the theme to Kinta. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I think that should work now. TTK.style. Let's see what that gives us. Right, so that works out, right? Great. Uh, let me set the foreground here. Set the foreground. to say red. And let's run the program. Okay, so that works out. Now guys, let me um, create some, some space.
vertically between the button and the input area. So I would come to the pad here and set pad, pad the y, pad it on the y axis by say 12 points. So pad y, 12 points like that. And let's see. So there's some space now, right? Now the, the last uh, widget I want to create is um, a text area. You know, if you are coming from HTML, that text area, a larger box for text, that's what I want to create. And that can be done using, so let me just call it TX, visualize that. TK dot text, right? And the text there, put it on the window. Now, you guys see, I'm not using TTK because um, yeah, that was, it, that's not available in TTK, I guess. But it is available as just, you know, part of the core Tkinta um, class there, TK, right? So win, and then the next is to, what do I want to set now? Having created my text. Okay, nothing at this point. Let me just leave it at that. I'll come back to my entry. How do I get the, the input by the user? So I'm going to create a variable. A variable. And call, get it from Tikinta's string var method, right? That's just it. TV. And I'll set it variable name. So text variable, text variable becomes TV. So that's what I'm going to use at the end of the day to get the input from the user. All right, so guys, um, I've just created this text area. I now need to you know, do some modifications as well. So taking, let's just see, let's see, let me just pack this tx.pack. I like to visualize it as I you know, create, just to see text. Oh, variable, instead of variable. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so that's created our text area here, right? Okay, now I want to do some, some I want to create a scroll bar. I need a scroll bar just in case you have uh, more, more permutations than you know, the space in our text area can, can uh, permit. So a scroll bar to scroll through all those arrangements. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a scroll bar, I'll just call it SCRL and CTK dot scroll bar. Right? And then have it my window, just like that. Then using the SC, using that scroll bar, I'm going to configure, do some configuration. Okay. And that's, so let me, let me pack this for now. Let me just pack. And I want, I want it to the right side. You scroll back to the right. So I'm going to use side argument there, named argument. And that will be tk dot right. Okay. Then I want it to fill the container, the parent container. So I'm going to use fill. And what do I want? I want it to expand, I mean, to take up the available space, tk dot right as well, to the right. Okay, so that's what the scroll bar is going to do. It's going to take up the space in the parent container. Then, guys, um, I now want to, I 
do some configuration. SC RL, then um, command. What should happen now? Taking the the text area, take the text area, and I'm going to do the um, Y view of that. Guys, I hope you understand. So I'm going to view along the Y axis within the text area. That's what this is saying, Y view. Okay, then I'm going to next um, take my, now take my text, configure that as well. And this time I'm going to use the Y scroll command. Y scroll command. And that's going to be set to SCRL, taking that scroll bar and just simply setting it to my text area. All right, I think that should be that should be that. Now let's let's um, run this. What does this say? Bad feel style right must be known. Oh, sorry guys, what an error. I can't have right for feel. It's just going to feel y or x. So I'm just going to say feel feel y just like that. Okay, so the scroll bar here is created. Yeah, I think we've done much concerning the, you know, the layout. Now I want the functionality. What should happen when the button is clicked? I'm going to go back to my button here. Go back to the button. You know, here I initialize the button. Then there should be a command. So, what should happen, right? There should be, so I'm going to create a, a function. Once I click the button, whatever is you know within that function gets executed. Whatever program is within the function. So I'm just gonna call it out function because my permutation function will be within this outer function that gets called when the button is clicked. So that's why I'm just calling this out f, meaning, out function, right? Okay, so I'm going to have it here. Dev out function. Now that takes no arguments. Then the input should actually come from, from the entry, right? So I will just simply say, um, imp. Remember our text variable, TV, then just get it, get whatever was imputed, just like that. TV.get, what does it say? TV can be undefined. Let's see. Oh, please, guys, I need to indent this. Indent, indent, and indent. Okay. So that's, that's taken here now, tv.get. And finally here, I'm, doing, I'm just going to call, call my PEMS from within the outer function. PEMS, and what are the arguments in the order? Input, length, and start, okay. So that will be imp, the length and the start. Just like that. Now, one more thing, guys. You know how after every successful um, arrangement, a, a, a string, a new string is created, right? So I need to have a container to hold all the different arrangements. I need a list that should 
hold all those different arrangements. That will necessitate my creating a list holder. Like, let me just create a variable and call it list holder. Set it to an empty string. So I'm going to pass it as part. I pass it a, as part of the argument of my pems, pems function. So this should just be the list holder. Okay. Then right here, I'm going to include it as lh. Let's call it lh. This in this um, place as the argument here, and lh. Now, what am I going to do with the LH? <clears throat> Instead of printing, I'm just going to append. Append to LH. That's what I'm just going to do there. LH dot append. Just that, just like that. Then at the end of the day, guys, you know, since I'm not printing, I'm just appending. I need to be able to now return something from the PEMS uh, function. So return LH. Return that list that has all the arrangements that we have derived so that's what should be returned so return lh and since lh is returned here i'm going to now save it in a variable right so i'm just going to say variable the arrangements Variable arrangement. Just let me just call it arrangement. Okay. Right. Then um, I'm going to now insert it into the um, text area just by calling the insert method. So tx dot insert. And that's going to simply just be arrangements. Just like that. And I'm going to set some things to the to the end here. So CK dot end like that. So to the end. Right. So let's see if that works. Let's see if it works. I hope it does. Cut. Right, it does work. But guys, I, I just realized something. If I have CAT and if I have C A T S. So you see that I still have the previous three letters before I change the number of letters to four. But that's not what I want. When I click this submit, it should wipe off everything that was in the text area before bringing in new data. So I need to delete what was there at the click of the button before it adds, I mean, before it puts whatever it is, you know, in, the, in that text area, it should remove whatever was there. So that's just going to be done, you know, in a very, very simple way. Just come here at the very beginning, take my text and call the delete, that text area, call the delete um, method there. And here, guys, something quite funny. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. So I'm just going to have 1.0 there. And then have TK to the end. Just like that. Well, just I have this 1.0. I mean, it wasn't working, but when I tried this 1.0, you know, it worked. So let's see, guys. CAT submit. So we have three letters each. If I have the fourth one, let's see 
if he removes the previous ones. Yes, so you see that we have four characters. So he removed the three characters that we had there previously. Okay, so guys, um, another thing that might happen. So let me just say V here, submit. I want a comma. I want a comma, right? So how do I do that? Right here, I'm going to join, where is it, where is it, where is it? Arrangements. So I'm going to take arrangements again and set it to, I'm going to join comma with space dot, you know, join. And that should give us arrangements, just like that. And then I want to, before this, I want to get norms, the norms, how many arrangements, number of arrangements. So I just call it norms, right? And that should just be the length of arrangements. How many arrangements do we have permutations? So right here, I would have a string. Sorry, I want to concatenate using this string and line break, two line breaks, after which I want the system to tell me how many arrangements we got. So I'll just have the norms there, just like that. I'm sure this is same string, right? So let me make this convert it to a string so that I can use it there, all right. So that's this string here, calling the string method, it's gonna convert the number, like how many arrangements we have to a string. Then one final thing, I don't want the, I don't want any break. I want the words whole. So if there's no space for, for an entire word, it should come to the next line. And Tikinta provides us a wrap argument, you know, within the text area. So I'm just going to, have this here. Um, wrap. TK the word. So wrap by word, right? Okay. So let's see. Um, woman seven hundred and one hundred and twenty. Are we sure about that? Let me have woman's that gives us seven hundred and twenty. Okay. What about cat? six permutations and um, let me see, let me have four words, cake, 24. Yes, so what I've just done guys is, okay, give, give all the arrangements, possible arrangements and give us the number of those, how many arrangements we have. So 24 in this case. Yeah, so guys, I hope we learned something. It's not an easy thing to, for starters, right? But you know, with practice, I believe you get the hang of it. Having to learn how to use Tikinta, no one, no one is perfect. I myself have uh, had to learn the Tikinta class, right? So thank you guys, and I hope to see you in my next video. I will be doing something on, um, I'll be doing something, making an app that will convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. But before then, I would like you to please subscribe to my channel. It is, you can find it there at um, YouTube, I mean on YouTube, youtube.com 
slash C slash thinking, thinking for impact. Yeah, just like that. Thinking for impact, that's the name of my channel. And then you can also visit my website at www.thetutoraid.com.ng. All right, so please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please also leave a comment. You can be sure that you get a response from me. Do have a great day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.